Hello and welcome back to learning objective number four of chapter six. Here we'll be identifying the effects of inventory errors on the financial statements. The most common errors when accounting for inventory include ending inventory as well as recording purchases. Since inventory is a balance sheet account and since stuff moving out of inventory, that is things that we sell, inventory that we sell, uh, decrease our inventory and increase our cost of goods sold on the income statement. Errors in both of these affect both the statement of financial position, our balance sheet, and our income statement. So a summary of errors. So if inventory is overstated, that means that cost of goods sold is understated. Remember, because we flow in, I'm just gonna put up a little, little Excel. So if we have our inventory T account here, and we have our cost of goods sold T account here, and I know this is gonna be the world's most beautiful T account, even better than last video. Um, and so we have our beginning, we have our purchases, we have our ending, <laughs> and uh, then we have our cost of goods sold, and remember, all of our income statement accounts, our temporary accounts, so we have our cost of goods sold. When we have our, what we sell here, we have our cost of goods sold, reduces our inventory, and let's let's draw something. Let's find the little shape. All right, goes right here. And so if we look at what this entry is, that would be our debit to cost of goods sold and our credit to inventory. So we're decreasing this T account and increasing this T account. So when we scooch back to our slide, fabulous. Yay, we got it all on the same screen. Okay, we scooch back to our slide. If inventory is understated, that means, so if this is too few, that means we put too much here. Sorry, if um, inventory is understated, yeah, then we put too few here and our cost of goods sold is uh, then gonna be understated. And if our expense account is understated, then our gross profit is overstated. Gross profit um, flows through to income tax, uh, part, to income, um, and then that flows to retainer. So let's let's take a peek. Uh, well, actually revisit our chapter one videos for that flow because essentially when we have our revenues minus our expenses uh, equals our um, our profit and that's the one step if we do the two step that's where we split up our expenses uh, and that would have been covered in uh, the last video our two step we would have been having our cost of goods sold so rev revenues minus cost of goods sold equals our gross profit minus our operating expenses uh, equals our net operating profit. So either way, um, these two go together because we're looking at the impact to cost of goods sold. And our profit. Our profit then articulates through to our retained earnings, which then is on our balance sheet. So here, if we have too few inventory, that's because we put too much in the cost of goods sold. And if we put too much in the cost of goods sold, that means our expenses are too high and therefore our gross profit is understated. And if our gross profit is understated, so is our total profit profit. And then if our profit is understated, that articulates through to our retained earnings. Our retained earnings, the earnings that we retain in the company are also understated. All right, we'll have some practice on this in just a second. So, in summary, if the inventory is counted correctly in the next period, then there is no longer an error in ending inventory. So, very interesting that it's possible 
that you could have uh, an error in a prior period, uh, but then fix it in the current period and no longer have an issue. So when working through, hey, is this an error? Is this not an error? It's really important to either break out your journal entries, break out your T accounts, um, look at it year in, year out, and understand, is there an issue here? Okay, time for a question. An overstatement of ending inventory balance an in ending inventory balance would affect which account? Give this a read, um, pause the video, and come back in a few moments. Let me know how you did. All right, and if you said retained earnings, you would be absolutely correct. Uh, and that is because, as we said here, if you have an overstatement um, in your ending inventory, that means your COGS, um, cost of goods sold, were too low, and your profit was too high, and that means your retained earnings were too high. If you were like Samantha, obviously, inventory affects sales. Mm, sort of, sort of, but not really. So yes, when you make a sale, debit, AR, or cash, and credit revenue, that's awesome. That is your sales. And then you also have to record an, an entry for the inventory that you sell. So cost of goods sold and uh, credit inventory. So there's actually two entries. So far in this video and in the next, we are only been looking at this. This has been operating in the background. So that's why um, if you have an overstatement of ending inventory balance, that's why it doesn't affect your sales account. And similarly, um, it doesn't affect your refund liability. That is provision uh, that we discussed last video. Uh, so an overstatement and inventory balance would not affect that. And it's not a purchase. It's literally just, did you, like at the end of the day, you didn't perform your account well enough or you, Performed your count and you have too much ending inventory, so what's going to be impacted? Cost of goods sold, and which one does cost of goods sold flow through? Retain earnings. Pretty tricky question. Uh, so if you've got this, big round of applause. And if you didn't, um, perhaps rewatch this video and perhaps a few of the videos that I mentioned, uh, just in case you're you're still not quite getting it. Post questions below, discussion board. Happy to chat. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.